Welcome to our time of worship and our celebration at this special point on the calendar. We are worshiping today and celebrating Monday, Thursday, that time when Jesus gathered in the upper room with his disciples, that time we remember as the Last Supper. Let us open this worship with prayer. Dear Creator and Holy One, we thank you for this time of remembrance, and we thank you for this time when we are called to be servants ourselves, when we are called to share our love with each other, even during these times when we may feel isolated, even during these times when we are not able to gather together under one roof, we are able to gather together virtually. Help us to see how, even during these times, we can be a servant to each other, a servant to our community, and show again and again that we are truly Christians by our love. Let us end this prayer and celebrate this worship together. In the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, let us say, Amen. And now we will start our worship with the hymn, Jesu, Jesu. Hello, it's Monday Thursday service, and I'd like to talk to you just a little bit from the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter, verses 5 through 12, verses 5 through 12. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet 
and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. So he came to St. Peter. He said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I do, do not realize now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash your feet, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash my feet. Not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, You has bathed need only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. You are clean, but not all of you. For he knew the one who was betraying him. For this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. I wanted to ask us today, again today, taking off from Palm Sunday, is how many of you really understand how much Jesus loves you? Now, loving one another like Jesus loves us means that we live with an overflow of love, unselfish, sacrificial, agape love. The problem with some of us is that we all have that streak of selfishness in our own sin nature. Well, we were born with it, and it can be hard for us to overcome. But I believe God wants to help us. And one way to overcome our selfishness is simply to turn your eyes upon Jesus. As we have observed through this Lenten season, the more we look at the Lord's unselfish, sacrificial, servant-hearted life, the more that we can be, trans we can be transformed to be like him. That's partly why 2 Corinthians 3.18 talks about Christians beholding the glory of the Lord and being transformed into his image from glory to glory, the spirit of God. First of all, let me say that Jesus shows his love for us in that he would stand by us. The truth for us is located in verse 1 where John what John wrote, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, he should depart the, from this world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Isn't that wonderful for you and I today? That Jesus loved us even in the midst of what he was about to suffer and go through. How many of you have experienced that type of love before? Someone that was with you to the bitter end. And then Jesus also loved him or loved us enough to sacrifice himself for us. Let's, let's look at this. A lot is going on. Jesus is getting ready to be offered up. It says it was almost the time for the feast of the Passover, the annual feast that the religious Jews still observe today. The Passover was instituted by God some 3,500 years ago, again on the night before the children of Israel escaped from Egypt. The Lord told them to take a spotless lamb, kill it, and put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of their home. I'm sure many of you Bible scholars know what that was all about. It was the way God's way of protecting the firstborn of their children. The blood on the doorpost every year pointed to the blood that Jesus would pour out on the cross for us. Now that's good news. And now 
in John 13, the time has come. And as verse 1 said, Jesus knew that his hour was upon him, that he should depart from this world. He departed by the way of the cross because he loved us, you and I, enough to sacrifice himself for us. Well, as we see tonight, that Jesus also loved himself enough to become a servant. I love what he told told Peter. He said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. Isn't that beautiful? I believe what Jesus was saying to him, in order to be identified with me, you must go through some of things that I'm going through, but I'm also preparing you for the moment that's at hand. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from the supper, laid aside his garments, took his towel that, and girded himself. And after that, the Bible says that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, to wipe them with the very towel with which he had been girded. Wow. Wow. The king of universe stooped to wash his followers' feet. Hmm. Max Lucado once said, Hands that shake the stars now wash away filth. Fingers that form mountains now massage toes. And the one by whom all people would kneel one day now kneels before his disciples. Hours before his own death, Jesus' concern is singular. For he wants his disciples to know how much he loves them. And more than removing dirt, Jesus was actually moving or removing doubt. Jesus loved us enough to become a servant for us. And then finally, Jesus loved us. Enough to show us the way. Isn't that good news? That's beautiful. Look at this. Look at this. These have a message. This one says what Jesus said to us. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. I ask you today, on this Monday, Thursday, if you would search your heart. There's a song that we used to sing in the church some years ago, Is Thine Heart Right with God? As we progress through this Lenten season, let me encourage you to search your heart today to ensure that your heart lines up with his heart. And I ask you to do this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is indeed our Lord and our Savior. Oh.